Hey everyone, we are back with another episode of Unbounded, and I'm here today with a special guest. We are with Jack Sirica, and he has a really interesting story. Um, and also, I'm so excited for y'all to hear the recent transition that's happening, his love for music. And so I think this is going to be a beautiful guest on our show today. So um, Jack, if you want to give a, a quick, brief introduction of yourself, that would be great. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Jack Sirica. I live in uh, Northport, New York on Long Island. Um, I uh, appreciate the opportunity to uh, to be here with you. Uh, I think you want to talk about my uh, uh, career in music here. Uh, I am. Uh, I just turned 71. I'm about to retire in six weeks from now. Congratulations. And from a very, thank you. Fulfilling but very demanding job as a uh, the uh, government and politics editor at Newsday, which is the daily newspaper on Long Island in New York. And, uh, you know, it's elections, it's 10 hour days. I've learned to do it very well. And uh, so I'm going to now take a leap. And uh, I think we have enough money and I've got some other interests. And my family has been leaning on me for about two years to do this. So I'm just going to go along with them and uh, do what they say. Um, I, uh, you know, I, started to play the drums about 12 years ago. I frankly had read a magazine article about a professional blues uh, guitarist who literally had started at about age 59, never played the guitar, nothing, always wanted to yeah. and learned and was, you know, doing pretty well. And I thought, well, you know, my son is just Jackson who lives in London and I, you have a daughter, Amaya, who lives in Lisbon, uh, had learned how to play the guitar. Amaya is a good singer. So I start at the uh, local music store with my first teacher, Bruce Roy, who says to me, do you know how to hold a stick? And I, no, Bruce, I don't. So <laughs> that's, that's the level I started on. And um, I'd go every Saturday, you know, waiting with the other children down in the waiting room, you know, who were there for uh, under their parents' duress a lot of times and You'd hear over a conversation, look, if you just practice more, the teacher just told you, you know, I've tell been telling you this. And I'm like, <laughs> so it was. Uh, what was it like for you to go into situations like that? Well, I, you know, I knew I had to start from the beginning. I, And so I was fine. I just noted the, you know, oddity of, you know, being in my whatever, early 60s. And most of my waiting room friends were like, you know, 12, 14, seven years old, you know, with their parents there. And, uh, and it was fine, you know, and, uh, I, you know, fortunately the music store just put up with me and let me sit down there with in the basement, hearing this stuff go up for the rafters. It was not good for a long time. And, um, so there you go. And I just, um, had always wanted to play music. My mother had been a, uh, amateur singer. She, we were from Washington DC originally. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, she, uh, the family story goes that she had been accepted to Juilliard when she was younger, really did not want to move from Washington away from uh, home and family. And so and and so she didn't. And uh, and I was, you know, she was a great mother. I have two younger sisters and my mother and father and the, the five of us. So but I do remember lying on the carpet down under the piano and watched how the pedals work. She used to play the pedals and I was just very interested in. How does she, that? Did she play the piano while she sang? Or... Yeah, 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 yeah. She had a baby grand in the living room, and so it seeped in, obviously, somehow, you know. Uh, but my music career, such as it was, was started and ended fast when I was about fifteen years old in high school, and I mm -hmm. talked my father into buying me a little powder blue Fender Mustang guitar, a little Fender amp, and I started to take lessons. And at the same time, in his mind, directly connected was I began to flunk math in school. And oh, so, so, so you, that came at the same time. To him, they were completely, you know, connected. The guitar was causing the decline in the math grades. I had to go to school on Saturdays. So at that age, we marched back to the music store, Chuck Levins in Washington, and returned them both. And I still remember. And there we had it. But the love of music continued. So, you know, I'm uh, just some I'm somebody who grew up on, you know, <laughs> 60s, 70s, 80s rock. 
And, uh, you know, the Rolling Stones were my favorite band, still are. Yeah. Taking my sister Sunday next at, to the Meadowlands to see them. That's amazing. That's <laughs> and they're amazing. all 80. And uh, their drummer, Charlie Watts, was just, you know, my inspiration and got me started. And uh, and then, uh, you know, I uh, he was a, a, a he really was a jazz, jazz drummer at heart. And uh, uh, I could always hear and their you know, their music is very simple. A lot of it's four, four time. Yep. But you could always hear some little difference in there. And I realized it was him. A lot of cases because he would miss a beat, he would go off beat a little bit. When did you actually started hearing and noticing? So I'm sorry. When did you start noticing these things about the drummer? Kind of like, oh, there's something odd about the music. That. Well, I just take it up. The, the, the fact I glommed onto them in particular, you know, there were all those bands back then, but, and I would think, why do I like this band so much? Really? You know, it wasn't really for. It wasn't for Mick Jagger. It was, you know, Keith Richards is a wonderful rhythm guitarist, but it was, I realized it was, the drumming was just a little bit off all the time. It was, it had a swing to it. And I realized later when I started to, you know, like jazz and get into that, that that's what he was. He was just put enough of jazz, off beats, the swing. And it just, like jazz, it made it interesting because you don't quite know what's coming all the time, you know? Mm-hmm. Always sort of surprised. Well, but anyway. that, that notice, when did you notice the, when did you connect it? So how long, clearly you were around high school when you first started listening to music, but at what point were you like, that's what it is? That's you know, it took it a long time, really, until I just thinking as you asked me, until I started taking lessons, you know, at the music store and, and A, how difficult it was to play anything, you know? And B, you know, you could and you get a little exposure to jazz drumming, which I'd heard for years. But and, you know, it's it it just has a, it's not a one, two, three, four, one, a two, a three. It's got a little swing to it. And and I realized, oh, that's what I liked about him, because he just he put a very uh, different spin on what could have been a extremely straightforward great band. But it it had that little extra bit to me always. So at any rate, I always admired him and I thought he carried himself well in public and did not, you know, try to make a big scene wherever he went and got the job done every day and, uh, and went home. So. Yeah. So it sounds to me that from high school, then your father said, no more, no more guitaring for me. Mm -hmm. From that point is, was it up until the fifties and sixties where you, you finally were able to pick another instrument up. Was that the timeline? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I had, um, I know part of uh, what you do with people when you interview them is, well, how do you pursue your craft? You know, yes. how do you make time for it? Yes. And how do you, you know, actually do it? And I was thinking about that after, you know, reading about you a little bit. Um, uh, you know, I, it, it's, it's like, you know, when I was in college, I was embarrassed for never having learned another a foreign language. Growing up in this country, I don't know, it's very difficult to learn another language because everybody speaks English and there's no point really in, in a way. Yeah. So I determined being of Italian-American heritage, I was going to learn how to speak Italian. And uh, went to Italy, lived with a family in a a program through Syracuse University. Purposefully did not hang around with American kids, not for I didn't not because I didn't like them, because I knew I'd speak English all the time. You know, for women, carried a dictionary around. And when I hear words during the day that I didn't know, I write them down a notebook. And Italian friends thought this was funny, and I was like, okay, but you know, really, it's the only way I'm going to learn this. So. And starting from the bottom like that, I just try to apply the same thing to this because I knew it was going to be like that. And I uh, many, many times have I wanted to just quit and throw my hands up with this and say, I am never going to be able to learn how to do this. It's too difficult. What am I doing? And I would just persevere and keep going. I would go up after work every other day. I would try where the drums are on the third floor yeah. and practice and do what I was told to do. And fortunately, um, 
after I'd been doing this for a while, uh, we were at a jazz club in New York City, which is, which, you know, yeah, saw its demise in the pandemic, jazz standard. But my wife, I, I, I said, hello, I knew the drummer and I just said hello to him at the bar. And for me, that was all I was going to do. You know, my wife was much more outgoing, starts up a conversation with him, you know, and get, <laughs> and before I know it, I'm taking a drum class with him, you know, at his house in New Jersey, you know. Wait, time out. This is really yeah you know i uh my wife and i work well together you know you've seen a lot of couples probably one is more toward the introverted side and one is more toward the extroverted and she's over there on the extrovert and i'm on the introvert side and uh and his name is billy drummond he's a first call great jazz drummer you know you see him play all over new york all the time and uh, we became very good friends as well you know which is really uh what a beautiful relationship yeah, how that even started. Really almost the best part, but he's a big audiophile as I am and spends too much money on stereo and hi-fi equipment too. So <laughs> but he taught he said to me, look, go upstairs and just take this stick and play the you know, the jazz is a right, it's a da 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 da. da that's kind of what keeps it going. Mm -hmm. He said, just put the music on. And try to fall into the music, you know, don't worry about the how you're holding the stick and just try to, you know, be in it. And that kind of was a breakthrough for me because I had been, you know, doing it with books and I like learned great so anyway, that's and I just kept at it, you know, and it's not I'm not great, but I'm recently joined a uh, <laughs> a band of other old guys and and ladies which I and uh these you know they're they're better musicians than i am that's for sure and i'm glad they're having me but um uh and uh so we practice every few weeks and we're gonna do you know uh, a little gig at the church where we practice in june and uh how did you find them what was what why was am I, found? I don't find these people she finds them i uh she were friends with a guitarist was a friend of hers and introduces us and lo and behold, before I know it, he's calling me at her behest to say, hey, would you like to uh, come sit in? And I was very, uh, you know, I am uh, i don't like to go out in the morning unless I know exactly what I'm doing. And I'm practiced. Mm -hmm. I had to get off of that. And she knew it. And my kids knew it. And so I said, sure. And uh, nervously went, went to the first practice, you know, mm -hmm. and. And I learned, you know, I actually was not bad at keeping time, and uh, which is the Isn't main. Isn't that job. really cool how you just learn things about yourself when you're um, when you just get thrown in? It's yeah, really, it's, really cool. This is what I sort of need to do. I know I need to do that, and I allowed myself to <laughs> be thrown in, and it's been a very good experience. It's been going on for some months, and I've learned a lot. You know, when you play with other people, yeah. You have to be in sync and watch, you know, you know, where's the one on the song? And I'll watch the rhythm guitarist, the guy who started the band, and I'll try to stick with his, you know, his hand and where he mm -hmm. is want to. And and uh, you know, I, I was very uh I was really kind of gratified very recently. My wife sat in on one practice and took some video, which I'll ask her to send you. She's out of town right now. And uh the and I noticed that I the hardest thing in, I've ever had to learn was to how to get the hands right, you know. So you're playing from the mm -hmm. wrist and you know not getting shoulder pain. And and I thought I looked at it and I thought you know what, just by nature I'm playing from the wrists here. I could see that, you know. And and that to me is a great accomplishment because it was really difficult. To, yeah, so it's not perfect. But you, but it's getting better. But you see the improvements as as you go on. Yeah, it's so I just keep going, you know. I go whenever practice is called, I go. Yeah. And uh, you know, they know a lot, you know, they read music very well and you know, they're introducing me to a number, uh, you know, new songs that I'd never tried sort of for the young people we have the latest to our uh, Dua Lipa song and also Wow, look at you. Cyrus song and I've you know, so Anyway, I'm just trying to learn all the different genres and and keep at it. So, and I like it. I, I feel it inside that I like it. And I 
So, What's your favorite part about being with this band? Um, it's the, um, I think it's what you, well, one thing is you cannot, if you're playing by yourself all the time, you cannot get the interaction with other people, you know, which is key to, you know, to the time of the song, especially, you know, if you're off a little bit or, you know, if if you're, if your mind drifts and you're kind of, you really have to, so that's been a great thing. And you know, also they are better musicians than I am. They're very good guitarists and singer. And I, so I just try to learn from them and, and watch them. And, uh, you know, the drummer, you can't really follow all the time because you're, you're responsible for <laughs> setting the, you're literally setting the, the pace, the time. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you're, you, you know, you try to lock in, especially with the bass player, which I had never done. And so this is all a new experience for me. Yeah, I'm just going to keep going for. <laughs> I remember the first time I realized why things were called drum and bass because it was a drummer and the bass that are actually kind of the backbone. Yep. And I had no idea. I'm like, oh, that makes so much sense mm-hmm. that they were the backbone of it. Yes. I, I I don't know why I thought it was. The singer, because you have to follow the rhythm of the singer. I, d- I don't know why it was like that. but Well, it's the rhythm. You know, they call it the rhythm section. And Billy Drummond, my friend, calls it, you need to be married to the bass player. You yeah. two need to be, you know, married. Yeah. You don't okay. like each other, whatever. You still need to be married. You know? so, so that's a cool relationship then. So obviously, if you're playing in a band, you kind of need that, that sync. <laughs> With, with your bass player. Yeah. So there's the story in a nutshell there, you know, and, but mm-hmm. I, you know, as far as the how to, I mean, everybody's different, but I know with me that, you know, one good quality that I learned from, I'm not sure exactly where, but school and, you know, um, knowing people who were, yeah, lawyers, you know, there were a lot of my father's friends were trial lawyers and, you know, and you could, you know, you could watch people. I don't, you don't know it at the time, but mm-hmm. in hindsight, these are people who uh, have a craft that they're really good at, you know, mm-hmm. and you can tell a difference between a good trial lawyer and one who doesn't really work too hard. And uh, so I got sort of schooled in, in that profession. I didn't want to be a lawyer, but you know, how they deal with a jury and how do they speak to jurors and not talk down to them, get this, get, you know, get their case across. They have some humor, you know, uh, and I, so I think I started with seeing people who were very good at the craft that they had, you know? And, and so I realized that I'm going to like, I'm going to have to start at the bottom here and just learn it from the depths of, uh, (laughs) <laughs> and be passionate about it too. All you know, I like it. I really do. I because I've in in hindsight all these years I've been listening to the drum parts of music. You know, you pick that out and listen to it, and uh, you don't really realize it until you start to play. Or at least I didn't. You know what was when you really focus in on that. What what, what it, was what was the reason why you chose the drums instead of back to the guitar? That was that fifteen year old self. Well, yeah. or the bass or, or any other instrument. Why specifically did you say, I'm going to sign up for drum classes? Well, I, you know, this sounds, you know, it's, it's possibly childish, but it really does go back to, to Charlie Watts, who passed away in 2021 at 80. I was still going. And I, I don't know. I've just always been particularly fond of that particular band, the Rolling Stones. Yeah. And I just kind of started particularly once studying the drums, why I like them so much all these years, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and I realized that really he was the kind of linchpin to me because again, he is a j- he was a jazz drummer at heart, a very good jazz drummer. And jazz is a little off. The beats are not one, two, three, you know, the one, mm-hmm. two, and you'll, they'll throw in a little bit on the snare drum and you, and it just makes it different enough to make it interesting, you know? And so I wonder with your career as an editor, would this have anything to do with 
with your career? Did it have in any way was different to always have the same, look at the same thing? Was it, I'm just wondering if there is a connection of being interested in always having something different, something new. Well, what, you know, what I do, I mean, I was a reporter for many years and, yeah. and you know, uh, was in the Washington Bureau covering Congress and and I started at the Nashville, Tennessee and first out of college and the same kind of way, you know, where you think you might be able to write, but you just go ahead and get thrown out there into the middle yeah. of a police with a huge fire and you're out covering it and you come back with a story and the yeah. editor says, well, the lead of the story, you've put it at the very end. Why was that? You know, it was a, a, a you know, a, a poignant moment in the story. And I'm like, well, I don't know. I just went out and took notes and put it in here. Yeah. <laughs> and I had a very good editor to begin with, Frank Ritter, who, uh, and it, you know, I realized as I went on in this business that I mm -hmm. got to be where I could do what I never knew how he did, you know, take a big mess of a story mm -hmm. and make it work through a just, you know, discussion with me, the reporter. And, uh, you know, his line, which is very true, is, you know, as long as the reporter brings you back the facts that you need, mm -hmm. we can fix anything, you know, but nothing can be fixed if the reporting isn't there. You know, you haven't interviewed people that you need. So, you know, and he was patient enough to take a big jumble from me multiple times. And I got to be later where I could do the same thing. And this is what I do now. And I realized as I was starting again in this, you know, humbling position of trying to learn how to play the drums mm -hmm. and being really bad at it, um, that I had, you know, developed in the craft that I chose, you know, to somebody who really, uh, you know, could do it well and be helpful to people and tell the reader story in the way that, you know, they could understand and you don't talk down to them and uh, it's clear. And uh, and so that's where I am with that now. And I'm very grateful to have had all those those opportunities to be able to be, become really good at something, you know. Yeah. But I can't keep doing it forever, I don't think. Yeah. And I guess that was part of what you were saying earlier about the craft and watching those earlier trial lawyers with Owning out of for you, and I guess it's to make a creative story that is communicative that reaches people. And you, you kind of find, or at least I do, you find people that you admire mm -hmm. in the first place, and then you start to look at how they do it. You know, lawyer, I did not want to be a lawyer, right? So I chose a journalism <laughs> path, and it turned out my father, who had you know, I'd always uh, wished he could have been a writer if he could have been something else. He was friends with a lot of the sports writers in Washington, you know, from the Washington Post. And and these guys were, you know, they're characters. And they were, but boy, they'd sit down at the end of the day and you were just completely amazed at what they could turn out in, in 45 minutes, you know, at typewriters. And, you know, the grace of the language and, the, and you know, and uh, so, you know, that's what I kind of, and in journalism, you know, you find people like that, that you kind of come across or you read. Uh, I mean, Jimmy Breslin, you may not know him. He was a, a longtime columnist for the Daily News and was just a first rate writer. And uh, he wrote as if he's, you're just talking to him, basically, you know. Yeah. And re before you realize it, he's trying to tell you a story of what happened here. And, uh, and you know. That's from long experience and working, and you know, on his part, really being interested in what people are telling him, you know? Yeah. And uh, so I pick up tips for over the years, like uh, there's another Washington Post reporter, much more senior than I, Ward Sinclair, the beautiful, graceful writer. And I said, well, how do you keep track? You know, you go out with a little notebook, and how do you keep track of people in here? Mm -hmm. and he said, well, the first thing I do is on the inside of the notebook, I'll write their name down. I make sure I get a phone number for them that I can call them back because I inevitably have questions about them. Mm -hmm. You know, put the age down. And so I, that was a very simple thing that because you always have more questions for people if you're doing your job right. Yeah. And so that little tips like that, you know, you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I'll take that one. You know? And people are nice enough to teach you. You know, if you really, if you're sincerely interested in what they do, no matter how good they are, I found a lot of they will help you, you know. 
So I like that advice actually. That that being genuinely curious will oftentimes yield someone to be like the drummer friend that you met at the jazz at the jazz club when your wife did the introduction. <laughs> like who knew? Right. Yeah, and, you'd start, you know, becoming like lessons and becoming friends. Yeah, no, he's a you know, in the, you can, you know, one of the things I liked about jazz once we moved to New York, and if you go mm-hmm. see people live, mm-hmm. it seemed to me that a number of them were having, if not a a, a spiritual experience, that mm-hmm. they were so uh, deep in it and moved by it, that to me, it came across a, a lot of them, that there was a spiritual element in what they did. I don't know how else to say it, you know, because they were you could see the looks on their faces and how they yes. interacted with each other. And it's a and um and so that's what Billy is trying to tell me was just try to lose yourself a little bit in this without losing the time, because the feel of it and the that kind of passion for it is is really it's it's certainly as important and probably more than you have to learn the technical basics first. Yeah, the foundations. Yeah, because then otherwise it's it, you can't do it. But so anyway, I you know, and I've tried to cultivate a you know a spiritual life all these years too, um, and uh, which is you know it's is a um, kind of a mission in itself. You know, because you have to pay attention to what you're feeling and what you're hearing and mm-hmm. what prods and sort of i love that you just said that. yeah you, know, you get you get signals and you're like you can ignore them or you can fight them and uh and it's scary to follow them i think a lot of times you know but you know so that's kind of going along with this you know kind of being lost in things in that yeah. sort of way so i like that a lot we're a recent podcast with a couple of musicians where like you just know when someone's writing from the source or singing from the source. That's what they call it. They're like it comes out different. Yeah. So like you can tell when someone's actually tapped in and creating something. Yeah. They're very yeah. different. Yeah, singers especially, you know, I think um it, that feeling it's 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 a more it's it's a more direct communication sometime with the audience because they're listening to your words, you know, and that emotion that they put into it. And, and, uh, you know, so, but what it's has the experience been like for you now that you're, you're doing this more often. What is that like for you? Well, you know, you know, when you've done something in your whole professional career, you know, and, Suddenly, you're not going to do it anymore. You know it's time to move on, and you know, you know there uh, younger editors at Newsday who you know who can do the just as well or better than I can. You know, and uh, let me in part, you know, leave the space there. You know, and these are people who used to work for me as a reporter. One in particular, I'm thinking about, and one of the things you know, I tried to do was leave you know, try to train people in a certain way that they could do this, you know, and, um, <clears throat> but so when you're uh, by choice faced with not doing this anymore, um, I, I've been actually very glad that I stuck with it all this time, you know, cause mm-hmm. I'm glad I have it. And, um, and, and again, the number of times I just wanted to just, I'd be up there in the third floor, you know, and just, I'm, my mind is trying to tell me I I am never going to get this. This is a ridiculous endeavor I'm involved in here. Uh, you know, any good musician you talk to pretty much will tell you they started when they were five, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, what am I doing here? And I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to keep <laughs> going anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not perfect, but it's, I'm glad I have it now. Put it that way, you know, because I have something to go to among other things, you know. We're planning to hopefully to move to Portugal. Both kids live in Europe. Yes, and so do. I'm doing the same thing with Portuguese, trying to study it in the car, you know, as I what? and I because having spoken speaking Italian, the grammar's familiar, but you know, it's you know, I realize it's 
it's not easy. Languages are very difficult. I know. I think they're very difficult to learn properly. So yeah, absolutely. that's how I do things. I just kind of start and plug. <laughs> yeah, you kind of you kind of plug. It sounds like you plug in, and then you just kind of do the work, and you just keep plugging away. Yeah. And when you're doing that, is there a specific end goal, or are you just trying to master? It's really the second because you know, in 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 music, I mean, <clears throat> this particular instrument, you know, there's a lot of physical aspects to it, like there is really with any of them. But um, you know, uh, you know that that you can't play well, or you can't play for any length of time for sure as a drummer if you're wearing yourself out and you know, you know, bashing from the shoulders. You know, I my shoulders are. You can't play unless you, so, you know, I read an interview one time with Mick Jagger, you know, who says, I get on the drums and I'm exhausted after five minutes. I don't know how Charlie does it. Mm -hmm. And it's just because they, they know the basics, you know? And so that's me, Mr. Basics. I, I, I I can't start out anywhere, but (laughs) from scratch. And I think there's just a value to me in this and in life too, the kind of the showing up aspect of it you know you just the the at the least i can show up and keep at it you know if i don't do that i'll never learn I, if you quit I love that. you know you definitely won't learn <laughs> if you, what, what is it that that's actually motivating because i know for a lot of people when i think of like, just in general it's like someone will have a life they're interested in painting yeah. But then they won't go on. They take one lesson and they sit. And like, what's how can someone keep going? Or at least for you, how do you allow yourself to keep showing up consistently? It's a good question. I mean, I just, uh, I, I mean, I relate it really to <clears throat> the writing in a way because. Uh, uh, you know, if you love something, I think, and I'm not saying this this was my mindset starting, but yeah. in hindsight, you know, I, have, I majored in English literature in college, yeah. and they exposed us to all sorts of writers who were very difficult, James Joyce and John Milton and really lengthy, long mm-hmm. books that had, a, in hindsight, a beautiful kind of cadence to them and though difficult they were really uh beautiful works Mm -hmm. and i think if you have something like that that you really take to you know and uh you 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 kind of you'll keep at it you know if you don't really like it or if i started to paint and i i i think i would go on to something else you know but and it's the same with music i've just carried this music gene along all these years but had not done anything about it and uh you know for you can have all sorts of reasons and they were pretty good reasons you know you you know journalism is a very demanding long day you just you stop when the story is done you know eight hours ten hours you know uh and uh that's and so you know i uh but along the way i had the good fortune to have the sense to you know want to have a family and i have a great wife and great kids too who love me apparently after all this time they do and uh you know i have my health and uh you know uh two sisters who love me my both our parents are gone but uh you know in the meantime you know while not playing the drums all this time and just mm-hmm. and working and then saving the rest of the time for the family which i don't regret one iota um you know i leave feeling really pretty grateful and overall fulfilled if that doesn't sound kind of well anyway that's the way i feel about it and um and so just with the drumming with what we started with i would just if i could i try to make myself even when i was determined i should quit this stupid endeavor Every other day after work, a long day, I would go up if I could do it and just make a point every other day uh, to the third floor where the drums are and just practice and keep at it. And and um, 
It's the only way I knew to look. <laughs> That's beautiful. It's that consistency and just showing up and doing something. So, and it's a, the, the better I get at it, the more kind of passionate I get about it. Exciting. And, you know, I, yeah. I want to go to practices and I, you know, I, you know, and I'm always available. <laughs> if possible. So. That's amazing. As, as you're, we talked about the pre on it. We talked about you're, you're going to retire soon. And so, what has that been like for you? What do you foresee moving forward? Where are you at? Well, you know, I have to tell you, it's, it's a little bit disconcerting, you know, because I really uh, <clears throat> have been in in one sort of structure for a long time you know yeah. uh trying to do very good work and to improve at the craft of writing and editing and journalism yeah. and 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 being a very you know present uh father with the kids and uh hopefully with my wife although i need to work on this sometimes you know where you know men can just you know become kind of yeah. but monosyllabic and you know you know you know how I feel. I don't need to tell you because I don't yeah. really want to right. dredge in there and, and express myself because it's just, I don't know, it's difficult. I mean, we, yeah. so I try to be more open in the marriage and it's, it's a work in progress too, you know, uh, but it wouldn't be working all this time if I didn't make efforts to change when my deficiencies were pointed out to me. Mm. Right. I love that. Keep self growth, character development. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. It's uh, I, I feel very lucky, but I uh, to your question, I I do feel sort of at sea. You know, now that you know we've just sold the house, and mm -hmm. and then um, okay, that's real now. Which is really wow. Happy. We that's signed, a big deal. Oh my god, cleaning it out and and making it ready, and you know we've been in the house twenty years, but the kids grew up here, and you find a little pair of shorts. And you go, oh, look at these shorts! And you're like, we are never going to get through this if we keep looking at it, every little pair of shirts, and this is not working. So we did that. It was an awful. I would frankly describe it as an awful, necessary experience. I would never want to go through it again. <laughs> but it did work. And then I give you know the other day I gave work. Okay, I'm retiring on the 28th of June. And That's next month. Yeah. That's and it's a little scary to put dates and things on it because this is actually happening here rather than, well, it might not happen. Or, you know, my house might not sell. Or, so there's a lot I don't know. And, you know, I I have I ask, frankly, uh, uh, for for help for wherever I'm asking for it from to, uh, you know, accept the unknown, really, because um, that there is an unknown. And that's just. There's a lot of unknowns here, and I I have to work on. Let me accept the unknown because it is a lot. So it's not the most comfortable thing, but so it's it's another yeah it's a definite um, <laughs> it's an adjustment. But I am as I what I was trying to say before. I'm very glad I had taken up this particular passion because it always was you know long before I started planning. It listening to music and being moved by it. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, where I came across jazz, I don't know, in the 70s, I have records up here that, you know, Obama Jamal, it was a great piano. I have no idea how I was exposed to the, somebody like him. And, and But I, you know, when he came in his 80s to jazz at Lincoln Center, I saw him both times. And, and he has a, you know, he had a beautiful uh, uh, technique and on the piano and, where that came from, I don't know, but I've always loved. You enjoyed it. You you really feel it, you know. You're it's the old goosebumps, and even talking about it to you now, I can feel a little bit of the old hair in the back, and I, I just um, you know pretty. I'm just transported by it when I'm in the middle of it, listening to somebody like that. And it's been a great experience to live in New York and near New York because they're they all play here. There's no better place than New York, and for them to play and it's still a difficult living you know the you know it, you know the, it's not a big money occupation that's for sure but you know. are you planning to stay in long term for a while or are you planning to up and move immediately what do you see so our plan again 
advised by my wife who's much better okay. at this than I am seeing yeah. some, you know, I can't really see anything other than what's right in front of me right now. Yeah. I like this house. I like <laughs> where my drums are. I d don't please let me just chain myself to the radiator and refuse to leave. It's kind of half yeah. half yeah. the time approaching this. But no, she has family on her father's side from Baltimore. And we're gonna go down there and live temporarily once we have to move out of the house. So. Okay. And it's a Baltimore is a very nice old line kind of East yeah. Coast city that you know that's very yeah. different from New York or you know or L.A. on the other end of things. And and it you know frankly it's much cheaper there. And then we're yeah. trying to get ourselves organized to be able to move to Portugal hopefully after the first of the year. Gotcha. But, so there's a lot of basic stuff that we kind of don't really know about okay. you know the finances etc. But we're going to try to make some things. Some things that. I know you got your drumsticks, and I wanted just to do like a quick show and tell. I don't know anything about a drumstick, so if you can just, if I, you could just show me, I'd be so excited to even see it. Um, yeah. Well, here we have the Charlie Watts signature model of drumsticks. Oh, wow. Okay. And, and if you think of a, a rock and roll, big, loud rock and roll band, um, they're, they're thick, you know, so mm -hmm. you kind of, it's easier to keep a grip on them, and they have a a large tip, which is louder than a little small one, you know. Yeah. And um, and plus, you know, I figure uh, let me just play with Charlie Watts sticks because uh, that's who I like. And you yeah. can play the drums or learn the hands, and you don't need a big set, you know. I have the old rubber practice pad here, which you know, in an apartment or anywhere, makes no noise. Yeah. And you can do the scut work of drumming, which is to work on the hands, you know, just different exercises. And, you know, and go along and, and work on, you know, because this is what you're trying to get is the yeah. it's all done the from the wrists, not in the shoulders. So anyway, and it's, uh, as usual, harder than it looks, you know, but, you know. I've, I've tried, you have to do two things, two separate things. Like. Right. It's, it works. I feel like it works your brain in a very weird way. It, it does because your feet, each each foot's doing something different. See, that's and the yeah. left hand is doing something different from the right. And it's what's diff. One thing that's difficult is, you know, stuff you're doing on the right, for example, is difficult oh. to make the foot and the hand do something different. You know. Yes. They want to. That's what I recently. I don't know why I didn't think about this. Like where it's like, oh, they're doing two different things or four different. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's just different things and different. You have the, I don't know what they're called, but it, it's just different drums. <laughs> and then if you think about it too much, it falls apart. You can't. Yes. Do it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's the trick of it to get so uh, beaten into the routine of how the basic stuff work. That you're not thinking about everything all, and I, uh, you know, it's sort of getting there, but it's I still fall apart a lot because you put a ride symbol in, you know, on the right, da 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 da, and you know, you, and if you start to think about it, you're it kind of falls apart. So, so you have to actually be in the zone, or yeah, you just have to, you have to have written that phone number in that notebook you know every single time you interviewed somebody and then somehow i'm told that it will it's all you know this stuff works itself out but. and it seems like it has where was this movie a while back about like the with that yes that's the only thing i know about like yeah, yeah. That, it's, that it's, teaching method of throwing symbols at people, you know, when you get pissed yeah. off and lose your temper with the student, there's no way to teach anybody anything, I don't think. But anyway, uh, so then <laughs> I wouldn't learn that way, put it that way. Yeah. But where he got that routine, uh, um, J.K. Simmons, who was a teacher in that, there was mm -hmm. a part in uh, in uh, Charlie Parker, who was a famous alto saxophone player the, you know, where he's on stage and he's just mm -hmm. not doing it right. And somebody threw a symbol at, him, you know, to, you know, and that's where we got that teaching method. You know, I worked for Charlie Parker, but, you know, I'm not sure. 
what's just, there. Yeah, I don't think it's there's a lot of different ways to do things, you know? Yeah. yeah. In, in journalism, there's a number of methods from yelling at people to, yeah. you know, losing your temper with them. And how come I'm told you how to do this right? And how come, you know, which never worked with me and uh, try to not do that. And, uh, you know, it's the same out being a reporter. You, you know, you know, you have to scream questions at people. Sometimes you're out in a big public setting, you know? And, uh, you know, I would do it because you need to do it. But it was never my, you know, ambition in life to make that, <laughs> you know, my main uh, my main trait. So they're just all in whatever you do. And I, you know, you had a woman who I watched one of your podcasts who um, uh, became a printmaker, I think. And yeah, uh, yeah. And how she did that, and she, you know, and she left. I forget what she had a corporate job of some sort, you know. And she's a software engineer. I think she's still oh. a, she's still a software engineer. And that was, um, and it was, you know, she's doing, you know, she's at the opposite end of the spectrum than I am, you know. And she's starting that, and and uh, she's much younger. But I saw, you know, you see that sort of the same thing in somebody like that who just loves the prints and the work of making them. <laughs> Yeah. And I think that was really one of my biggest reasons also that I wanted to do is that I feel like your life has been cyclical in that way, in, in the way that the passions will reintroduce itself constantly. And yeah. I feel like, I think when I talk to people, they're like, oh, my life is over. <laughs> kind of that that mentality that, like, oh, I'm too, I'm too old for this. I, I can't, like. It's too late for me. All these, all the things I wanted, they started when they were 11. Those are actually the things that I've heard. Like, mm. oh, this savant artist, like they started when they were 11. Or I went to, it's too late for me to go to culinary school. I'm, it's, those are like these young bucks. And then you have to like go into the kitchen for years to build up that stuff. But I don't know if I can do it. So it's a lot of that. But I think where I love your story, and where your story is going, but it's you have your phases. Well, yours, what you do is, I mean, I've just, I read a little bit about you, you know, and you left a corporate situation, right? Yeah. And you worked for Amazon, right? Yes, I did. Right, which is about as big as you could ever, <laughs> big an entity as you could ever want to work for, you know? Yes. And, uh, but I'll bet you, you learned stuff there that's useful to you here, I will bet. Yes. I don't like it. Because they are, you know, like them or not or whatever, but they're very, they have an organization that is amazingly functional. And yes, you can learn, you may not want to do that your whole life, you know, but where you are, you can learn a lot, uh, even if you kind of think, well, I may not really exactly want to be here forever, but, you know, you might as well, as long as you're there, keep your eyes open. Yeah, you have good examples, you have good exposure. Um, and I loved what you were saying earlier about just watching people hone in on their craft. Like they, again, going back to the, the trial work, you can tell the, the good ones versus the ones who were. You were absolutely yeah. yeah. And I think even being in New York, I noticed like passions were different here of how people pursue them. And so I was also in like a, like a comedy troupe, but I could tell like. Their passion was up here. And mine was like, oh, this is just kind of fun. Like, I don't want to do that. But you could witness how passionate people were. And it was just like, whoa, that was not me. Well, but you, you know, you have an interest in it and you like it. I do. I like it, but I am not willing to. It's just, you know, there's a, I I think crafts are important. I, I love the craft of things sometimes I don't think it needs to be at a professional level but the integration for me yeah I still do bits and pieces and it's woven through my work but it's not like I don't want to perform I want to be a writer right yeah well, but that, I, I would think too and you know in making a change to what you're doing now you probably have or had a, a very steep learning curve you know as to how to interview people and to and to, you know, hear what they say and kind of, you know, be, you know, I, I can see you're sincerely interested in what you're asking about, you know, and so I, 
respond to that. And if you weren't interested in this, you wouldn't be doing it, you know? You No, I just love hearing people's stories. Yeah. And I think I, the way that we speak, or I speak, maybe when someone hears me, it's not going to make the same impact as someone they hear you speaking. So we might kind of be saying the same idea, but the way it's presented sometimes hits all of it. Yeah. And I think that's important. I think, I, I think that's important to show because, and plus I was tired of saying the same, not the same, the same thing, but I was like, I think other people say this similar things, but they say it in such a different way or show it in a different way that it's impactful. And right. I think if people share their stories, whether that be their writing or just sharing it in a medium like video, people have the opportunity to, to listen and to, yeah, to find something that resonates. Yeah, and when you find that, you know it, you know, even if you're not making a huge fortune at it, you know, I mean, it's, uh, you know what resonates, and and then there's a lot of stuff that just doesn't resonate, and you just know it's never really going to resonate. Like math, for example, you know, I mean, I'm rudimentary, and uh, but I'm not really that interested in it, and I admire people who are mathematicians. I, I do, too. I remember, like, meeting scientists who are extremely passionate about what they're like i like i like that you like that yeah i clearly don't but it's like that you do and it's cool because the world needs the world needs people to like different things yeah they see yeah. the world in a very different way that you know and, and in some of them you know you can hear sort of a a spiritual organization not creationism but you can you can hear and see it in a way that never you know, it's way beyond the numbers that I, you know, yes. we kind of come out of school with. But yeah. how you would get there, how you had that kind of passion, I just never did. And and so, um, I don't know. So, anyway. Do you have any advice for someone who is looking to start something that they've been thinking about, that they've had an influence? You know, I, I just think you, you know, you have... It takes a lot of humility to start, you know, because you're terrible at it. I mean, at least in this case here. I mean, and and the minute I started to hear that so and so, whom I so admired as a drummer, started when he was five. Let's just say, mm -hmm. you know, that's an immediate opportunity for my mind to say, "This is ridiculous," and I'm not going to try this because. Mm -hmm. But you know, I'm not going to be like somebody who started at five. I'll never be that good. Um, but there is, I think, that kind of um, love for the particular endeavor that is worth pursuing in and of itself. And and I think really the craft of things is one thing that, you know, of printmaking or things that are intricate like that, or, or uh, you know, being able to interview people, you know, like you do, or uh, and, and it's uh, just the learning of a craft. I think a, a different craft is uh, it has its own value, no matter what the result of it is. And and then I just think it's like, okay, I decided to do this, and I'm going to. I'm not quitting. <laughs> no, I'm not quitting. And, yeah. And you know. So I don't know, that kind of just straight up perseverance sometimes, a lot of times, at least with me, can get me, keep me going, even though the result is not what I, uh, what I'm hoping for at the moment here. Yeah, but it seems like there's a lot of joy. Yeah, when you have little breakthroughs or little moments, you know, that are enough to kind of keep you going. If it were terrible all the time, I think I would know it. And, and, but, you know, you know, like when I saw the video and I'm like, oh, I'm playing from the, the wrists. And this took forever to be able to learn to do that. And the left hand is still a lot worse than the right hand, you know. Yeah. But I was like. There's oh. something new to achieve soon. Yeah, because, you know, if then you can play in this case, you know, as opposed to just falling apart after five minutes because it's too, you know, it's, it's mm -hmm. too stressful on your body to, if you, you know, do it wrong. So. 
that was a nice moment. I'll try to get my wife to send you this video. Yeah, you know, I, I can't wait to see it. Um, heard all about it, but it may not be as impressive as I'm describing it. But to... Oh, stop. It, it will be. It's <laughs> going to be amazing. Well, thank you so much, Jack, for your time on Sunday. Well, it's thank you. Midday. Yeah. Well, Tom, for taking all the time to speak to me, and hopefully uh, it was interesting to uh, it was you and what might watch. Thank you so much for your perspective on everything, and good luck with this next chapter of your life. I I think like in the next two years, if I come back and interview you, I think I'd get a totally different story. I hope so. I know I, I will get a totally different story. Thank you so much. All right.